Hey guys, Champagne Room Hoops Podcast, Season 2, Episode 6, All Things Illini Hoops on the Way. Stay tuned. I'm proud to tell you all that Champagne Room Hoops Podcast has partnered with Underdog Fantasy. On top of that, I've got even better news. They will match your first deposit up to $100, the only way for you to get in on this special is by downloading their app and using our code CRH24. Again, CRH24, even if you've already registered but haven't deposited, you can still use the promo. When you do, Underdog will match your first deposit up to $100. What are you waiting for? Get started today and come play along with us all season long at Underdog Sports. Again, CRH24 promo code. What's up, everybody? We are back for another edition of Champagne Room Hoops Podcast as part of Beyond the Big Ten Podcast Network. You can check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your podcasts, and also on YouTube at Beyond Big Ten. Also, make sure to follow along on all social media, Twitter, IG, and TikTok with the handle Beyond Big Ten. Once again, I am former Illini point guard Sam Maniscalco, joined by do-it-all swing man, the original Mr. 3 and D, the original Mr. Glue Guy himself, Billy Cole at Buck Wild Bill 3 3 and a very special guest kind enough to join us today, former Illini legendary coach, Bruce Weber. Coach, thank you so much for carving out the time. How the hell are you? I'm doing good. Thanks. Thanks for being on. And uh, always enjoy getting to see you guys. Sa- same with us. So, well, again, appreciate you carving out the time. Um, we'll touch on all topics here. Um, obviously, um, focus on on Illini, but keep, give us a little update on what you've been doing. Obviously, we see you and most people probably see you on the Big Ten Network, but a little bit about what's been going on with you since uh, you haven't been coaching this year, but doing some, obviously, some broadcasting stuff. Yeah, you know, I it, I guess retired two years ago and I uh, was fortunate to stay involved in the business with the Big Ten Network. Um, I do a handful of games. I got actually have Nebraska, Michigan next week, next Saturday, a week from Saturday. And I got a Minnesota game later in uh, early March. And and then I do the studio every Tuesday, Wednesday. And uh, it's fun to – and we've had unbelievable games. Uh, I mean, just some classic matchups, the, both Purdue Northwestern games, the uh, Illini Northwestern game. Uh, you can go on and on. We've been very fortunate to have those games, and it makes it fun. And just for me to stay involved, I love doing the games. Cause I get to go to practice. Uh, you know, I went up Michigan state for a couple days, hung out with coach Izzo, um, you know, come that when I went to Illinois, go to, you know, hang out, you know, coach Fraser, obviously one of our former guys. And, and that really, I know the whole staff, including coach Underwood. And so it's fun. That part's great. And, you know, we kind of go back and forth between Florida and St. Louis, got grandkids in St. Louis, Kansas city. And then we just kind of, hang out and chill in Naples. Bill knows about that. It's a pretty nice place. Rode bikes this morning. It was about 70 some degrees. Walk the beach, go swimming and and have a couple glasses of wine or beer every night at sunset. I'm building up the retirement portfolio now so I can join you in a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> and eat good food, right? That's another good Yes, exactly. Thing Sounds awesome. Um, let's dive right into a little bit. Uh, obviously, you know, coach, you're familiar with the whole Big Ten. We'll talk about that. But first, let's let's touch on the Illini. Bill and I have talked, you know, all season long about this team and how much we like, um, you know, how Brad put this team together and um, the experience, the maturity they have. Obviously, Marcus Damask being a great pickup and stuff. And um, so far, what are they, 16 and 5? Great start to the year. Great start to the Big Ten season now that, you know, T.S. Uh, T- Terrence Shannon Jr. is back. But um, what's your overall synopsis of, of, of them, you know, so far up to this point this year? Well, they're good. There's no doubt. They're better than I thought. You know, anytime you go in the portal, you don't know how it's going to mesh. Um, you know, I think it's it's a little bit of a crapshoot. And, and they were very, I think, very, very fortunate this year. Not only two really good players in in Damast and and then uh, Garrier, but uh, they're also seem to be good locker room guys. I got to beat Marcus Damast when um, I did the game earlier, their Western Illinois game, and and I, I met him at Southern Illinois also, and he's a Wisconsin Wisconsin guy like me. So um, 
but just a great young man. And uh, man, he's been good, better than I ever thought. I, it's crazy. I saw them play Southern Illinois play Bradley last year uh, near the end of the year, and it was for it was kind of crunch time in that Missouri Valley. They were all battling for one, two, and uh, this, it was our Sweet Sixteen. They honored our uh, our Saluki Sweet Sixteen team and. And Lance Jones has zero points in that game. The Mass had a pretty good game, but they lost to Bradley. And now you see these two guys on, you know, another bigger stage, and they're both playing so, such good basketball. So, um, you know, I think Coach Underwood's done a good job. Not He's got a good locker room, good pieces. Their size is what really, you know, of the other positions. They're, it's kind of that NBA small ball um, you know, and then he, he didn't have much success last year stopping Penn State with the booty ball and and those guys. And so he just kind of said, if I can't beat it, I'm going to do it. And mm. I, I think what happened when, you know, Shannon went out, it even became more prevalent just to give Marcus the ball and let him back his way in. He's a good passer. He's kind of a, a big point guard and, and he's got a big body. And, and the other guys, you know, when you got Hawkins out there, he can spread the court. Obviously, you know, if Gary A makes shots, uh, it's a whole, you know, that re- if he makes threes, I think that really puts people in binds. And then, you know, you get Shannon back, and it's a, it's a really tough situation. You know, Sammy, Billy, you guys were hurt. You come back, you just don't play right away and, and play at a high level. So it, I think people like, oh, he came back. What's, you know, what he's, why did he struggle? Well, he didn't play high level basketball for, you know, whatever, three weeks, a month. And, and without practice, tried to jump into it. You saw his legs. He wasn't shooting the ball well from three. And, and that's, you know, that's the first thing you need legs to shoot that ball. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think slowly, but surely if he gets back and, um, and they got to go through too, they found their roles when he was gone and they kind of were clicking. Now he comes back and now they got to, I think it's got to, they got to figure it out a little bit. Um, but I, you know, I think in, you know, as they go through the, they got some tough games left here coming up still, but they can beat some people and they've won on the road and they get in the NCAA tournament. The matchups are right. They, they can make some noise. Absolutely. I, I, I mean, you hit on a bunch of things I wanted to talk about today, but let's just start with the big one that you started with and we talked all last season about how poor their shot selection was and just how, you know, when it, there's no doubt how good of a player Matt Meyer was, but it just looked like there was agendas going on. It looked like he was forcing things for him sometimes. And then you, you, you come right back the next season with another big portal get in Damask. And for me, I, I just rewatched the Northwestern game, just his maturity and his, his intelligence on when, when to go to the booty ball and when to take over. It just sometimes both Ohio State and Northwestern, it seems like the first 10 minutes, he's almost he's just out there. And his intelligence is so good on when to go and when the team needs a big basket. And I I think that's so interesting. And then I, I'd love your opinion because it seems like we have in college basketball now, way more than ever, teams are looking for matchups and more teams are willing to switch to give them the matchup that they want. Um, and again, going back to Northwestern, Boo Booey was just looking for Luke Goody. And wherever he was on the court, they were going to go give a screen and Illinois would give it to him. Um, so I'm curious, like you mentioned the small ball. It's pretty obvious what Illinois' plan is, right? They do not want to switch or help at all on defense. And they want to make the opponent help as much as they can to shoot threes on offense. So is that the way that you see like tactics in college basketball changing? Or or do you think that's more of just working with what we have piecewise? Well, if you watched Bruce's board on the BTN network last week, yeah, I did a thing on mismatches, isolations, and small ball. And uh, but it's it's just it's part of it. It's part of college basketball now. Coach Katie, my old boss, keeps calling and saying, why don't they call five seconds? And, you know, the old rule, five seconds. <laughs> I said, Coach, they, they got rid of that rule. Why would that, Why the hell would they do that? And and I just kind of, I, I said, I'll be honest, Coach, I don't like it. And, you know, but it, they did it because the shot clock went down. And that now you can just dribble out and make a play and with space. And 
if but the key, Billy, what you brought up, he's got intelligence and he knows when to when to go, when to pass, when people help. Um, you know, I thought the first game when they played Northwestern at home, obviously you guys know you have Northwestern just had a horrible game. It was part of it, but uh, and, uh, and the Illini were kicking. But um, I thought they just did a great job of, of exploiting what Northwestern does on defense. And, you know, whether it's their post traps or getting in the paint when they help and not help and they're cutting. Ty Rogers is a, night, is a good cutter, um, you know, and uses his. So right now their role definition is really, really good. Yeah. But there's no doubt it's it's part of college basketball. You know, they coaches, you know, hey, that's the rule. So we're going to take advantage of it. And and now is it. Pretty sometimes, you know, I, I, you know, I don't always like it. it. You know, I like, I'm old school. I like passing, cutting and, uh, you know, and I think still you have some of that. You watch Wisconsin, you watch Purdue, you know, certain teams, uh, even Northwestern at times, they, you know, end of the game, they're going to boo booey, but also they're running floppy. They're running a lot of curls, uh, you know, so they kind of mix it in, but it's, it's definitely been, a positive thing for Coach Underwood and the Illini. And, um, you know, they're going to, until people can stop it, they're going to keep doing it. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. And, Coach, I agree with your point about, you know, obviously the transfer portal being such a, you know, crapshoot from year to year. Bill and I, you know, spent all year last year leading up to the season because of their, their portal gets last year, the expectations were so high for the Illini and those pieces just didn't fit this year. We came in kind of with not really, you know, any expectations, so to speak. And they're the line are a lot better than we thought they'd be at this point. And, and to your other point about role defining, we talked a lot about that last year. Roles just seem to be defined more this year. Um, and Marcus Damask, the big thing I think Marcus Damask, besides his skill set, has matured. You know, a fifteen hundred point scorer at Southern Illinois, just knows how to play the game. You know, can play inside, outside, like you said, a, a, a very fundamentally sound passer as well. Um, his emergence as as being could potentially be the guy or be you know kind of Robin to Terrence Shannon Jr. has allowed Coleman Hawkins to kind of play his own game, right? Coleman Hawkins doesn't have to be that guy. He can be what he is, which is kind of like a point forward center fielder on defense type of player. And I think Damask just fits that role for them so well and puts everybody else in their right positions. As as you watch with Coleman Hawkins, I think he's, you guys know, he's so emotional. And it last year, I think, because he had the, oh, he's the NBA guy, all this yeah. stuff. I think he had some pressure on it. He tried to do things he couldn't do. And now what you just brought up, he's doing what he can do. And he's making his open threes. He he's, just looks you know, more comfortable. We had, saying, and we had the kid, we had at K-State, Dean, Dean Wade, who plays for the Cavs now. I got a chance to watch him last week. But we always said, you know, he, you know, Hawkins would be wide open. And you guys would see it. He, he shot fake the air, you know, and it's yeah. like, what are you doing? And you know, we always talk about there's no more open than open. You gotta you gotta shoot the ball if you're open. If you if you don't take that good shot, now you're gonna probably screw up for the next couple guys because they're gonna recover and you're gonna have bad possession. So I think it's really helped with him, um, you know, to be able to do that. And and then they got it's not just the mass that can do it. Ty Rogers can get in there. He still doesn't have the savvy that. Uh, Marcus has or anything and then you know they they have a variety of people that can make the plays and the other guys kind of complement them and um, I and I I thought an important thing the other night I brought it up on the air when they played uh, Ohio State I thought they did a better job using their bench and you know the, to get a, they got I, I can't remember how many it was it was they had more bench points that game than they've had in a while so uh, from a variety of guys. So I think that helps too. And, and as you evolve your team, if you can get that bench to, uh, you know, really kind of be productive like that, it, it really even helps with your role definition and your progress as a team. Yeah, I think a couple good, great points there. I think the first one, you hit the nail on the head and it, it makes me laugh because there's so many Illini fans, whether it's Twitter or just out that you'll run into on the street that, Coleman Hawkins just drives him nuts with his emotionalism. And like, he always seems like he's on the verge of being out of control. 
but even even some of the text threads me and Sam are in with, with some you know laymen who have never played before. His defensive output is so crazy. The amount of uh, deflections in, in passing lanes and people he can guard one through five. He he's not you know especially on this team he's not going to be the 15 20 point a game scorer. I think people keep waiting for that that type of output, but it he he almost never comes off the floor because of his defense. I think he's one of the best defensive most dominant defensive players we've we've had in a long time and his his plus minus seems to bear that out a little bit. And then the next point I wanted to go to um Ty Rogers is just I thought his Ohio State game was his his best game of the year. Um He's kind of that that glue guy that holds us together on the road when when things are going a little haywire, and just the amount of effort and the offensive rebounding both at Northwestern and at Ohio State is is dominant, like dominant to the point where I think Northwestern at one point had twelve defensive rebounds and Illinois had eleven offensive rebounds, and that right there is a recipe for success in the Big Ten, just how physical and mature we are. And I think my last point on that, I'm curious, is Ty Rogers started out really well at Northwestern. He really didn't see the floor in the second half. And that was that was probably, if I'm going to nitpick Brad, and, and we love we love Coach Brad and what he does here, but if I had to nitpick that two things about that Northwestern game, and don't get me wrong, Northwestern played at the magic level. I, you know, like I said, I rewatched it. They hit every three. They played about as hard as I've seen a team play. But the we we switched anything that they wanted us to switch. That was my first issue with with that game. And the other thing was Ty Rogers really didn't see the floor in the second half, which I thought was strange. He played so well in the first half. Um, w- what were your thoughts on that Northwestern game, Coach? Well, one, it was a classic, and and Northwestern had to play. You know, I, I think I text with Chester after they had to play. You you know, you use the term magic level that we always talked about. That when guys just kind of play out of body experience, they're making every shot. But to Northwestern, they just did it at Purdue again. So it's not like you know they they're making sixty percent of their threes on the road and in one of the toughest places in the country to play. So. You know, it, it's so they're. I think actually they're they're pretty good, but um, you know, it, it it's it's interesting that game. Um, you know, all the big plays back and forth. I mean, it, it, it was just crazy, and you know, and then finally, you know, it gets they get the stop at the end. Uh, you know, it goes overtime, and you know like the Purdue Northwestern the other night it usually the home team kind of finds a way in overtime and gets a win. So, but it, I, I think at the Purdue, I was on a Purdue tell, uh, podcast this morning and their fans are like, Oh, how can we, you know, struggle with Northwestern? Well, they're actually good, good team. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and they're well yeah, coached sure. too. Yeah. And he's done a great job that you talk about role definition. They, they got yeah. great role definition and they know what all of them do and they have a great point guard. And, and that, to me, that's a key too. That's the, the big, what Illinois probably didn't have last year. And I don't know if you have a pure point guard this year, but you got guys that you guys brought up the words, you know, they have, they have that intelligence and, and that feel of the game and they, they make the right passes and the right plays and, and they don't, they're not a lot of assists, you know, because they get a lot of, you know, they back in and get those little shots, but they get the right assists at the right time. And I think that was the key with that Northwestern game. It just seemed like every time they made the right play, Northwestern made the right play, and it kind of just went back and forth. But it, it was a heck of a game. I, I know, you know, some we're on set and we're like, I'm emotional about the game, mm. you know, watching it. So, uh, but it, it, and it's funny, the first time it was such a lopsided game, and, you know, like people are, they're going to get killed. I said, no, I, I'm telling you, Northwestern's not going to get killed. And I actually, I don't know if you saw it on, on the, if you watch BTN, I had text uh, Rayfield Davis after the first game, and I said, I'm just telling you, Northwestern's going to win. We're he goes, no on. way, coach. Yep. And and I said, hey, I've, I've done this before. I know what it's like, yeah. emotions. And, uh, I went to, uh, I went to that Northwestern game and I, I sat, I go to like a few games a year and obviously that's, that's one of them I pick every year. And I went with a few buddies that were like, Oh, do we have a chance? You know, Northwestern fans, you know, yeah. do we have a chance tonight? Do we have a chance? I said, listen, you can throw record stats, everything out for this game. This is a rivalry yes. game. All that stuff goes away. I said, I'd be very surprised if Northwestern didn't squeak one out here 
just because yeah. of all the circumstances and stuff. Yeah. And the thing I, the first thing I noticed about this Illini team, watching them up close, you mentioned it early coach, their size, their size and physicality yeah. is, I mean, they are physical. Like I've seen some physical teams. I've been a part of some physical teams. That's the first thing that stood out to me was their physicality. And it's not like Zach Eady physical big guy. This is every position. Yes. They're, they're mature yes. bodies. Uh, yeah. You know, you guys talked about it. they're veterans. They're older. Um, and, and you know, like I did not, when I did the game and I got to go to practice, shoot around and hang, you know, kind of see them in the hallways and stuff. I couldn't, like Gary a is a man. He's yeah. just a man. You know, Marcus He's like is a man. You know, they, they've been in college basketball five years, and you guys know, Billy, you're the all, ultimate of, you know, 165 and, and <laughs> sweating, and then, you know, eight, you have to eat everything you can to get maybe to get near 200 by four years later. So, um, you know, it, it's, and that's what people don't understand. I don't think people appreciate they, in, in this day in society, they want instant success. And, you know, if, if you love Wisconsin's a great example, they're way stronger than they were a year ago. Physically, they're more mature, they're older. And then, you, you know, you add sword to the mix and that's what makes them special now. So um, that that that's the uh, you guys went through it. You know how that maturity and, and the weightlifting and the conditioning and the, and then that adds mental toughness, which I think they have pretty good mental toughness. Yeah, for sure. It's one thing to be mentally tough or just physically tough, but if you don't have the if you don't have the weight or the age or the experience or the the know how to back it up, it's it's a completely another thing to do it in Big Ten conference play. Which brings me to my next point, which is you know one thing I noticed on the schedule: we had five games in a row on two days rest, or or playing the third day at least. Um, and I thought if we transition a little bit to the Indiana game at home. I thought that was a total like win ugly game and, and maybe even a little bit of luck as I'm sure a lot of the Indiana fans will point out that uh, <laughs> Ware didn't play against us who, who played great against Iowa. I watched him the other night. He had yeah. like 26 points and left six free throws out there. So uh, that was a type of survive in advance and just get to the next one game. And I still think Terrence Shannon was, was still looking for himself a little bit. The, the jump shot, he, he seemed to be letting the jump shot kind of dictate everything else. But, um, and not to get too far ahead of ourselves, I thought the Ohio State game was the perfect get right game for him. They really surprised me. I'm interested to hear your coach, your take, coach. Just they, they looked, you know, I, we just talked about Northwestern's magic level. We played at Ohio State, a team that's desperate for wins. They looked dead to me. Yeah. Uh, they, they just didn't play, they, they didn't look like they played. I can't count the amount of shots Illinois had where we, they didn't have a defender within three or four feet of them. It just open shots everywhere. That program looks real, real down to me versus where, you know, where it was when what we were all used to, which was Thad Mata and, you know, top two or three in the conference every year. So what are your thoughts on those two games after that, that hard fought Northwestern game? Well, I think the Indiana game, it's, it's one of those, one, you got the hangover from Northwestern. You're still dealing with Shannon coming back, figuring it out. Like you said, it, you know, he, he he's he's kind of figuring out his role and and then it's a mental thing there's mental pressure on him there's no doubt about it and and it takes a little time and then you get catch indiana and they they're just trying to survive you know how that guy it, you know when you're you go into the game and you don't want to get your your butt kicked you know you're you're scrapping and scraping and making some plays that you probably wouldn't make so it, it that game did surprise me score wise I thought the Illini would hold, handle them much easier. A lot of other people have handled Indiana on the road uh, a little easier. But, uh, you know, there's always games in the it, during the season. You need to find a way to win. No game is – you're not going to play perfect all the time. And they, they found a way to win, which is the most important thing, you know. And, and, and then Ohio State, just like you talked about, I, but if you compare the, the – age of Ohio State to the Illini it's they're the, I think they're the youngest team in in the Big Ten and it's it's such a difference um, until we get rid of the COVID babies as I call it they got one more year of the you know you can play your whatever we were teasing you know 
they decide, the players decide when they're going to stop playing. Now they, they yeah. retire. They, <laughs> they don't get done with their eligibility. They just keep playing. So, you know, until we get done with those guys that are 50 year grad students, all that a year from now, um, it's going to be hard to win college basketball games with young guys. You, you know, again, you guys know you've been through it. You're, you're such a better player, you know, when you were 22 or 23 than you were when you were 18. And it, the habits, the the preparation, the knowing basketball, all those things, not to mention weight training and gaining weight and all, you know, the mental toughness part um, is so important. And that's what's going on with Ohio State. I, I, you know, two years in a row, they were top 25. If you remember, um, on like January 10th last year, they played Purdue. I don't know the exact date. And they lost that heartbreaker to Purdue at home. And then they just went on a skid and never recovered till the till the Big Ten tournament. And um, and then this year they again they're pretty hyped. They beat Alabama non conference. They play Texas A and M close, and uh, you know won some good games. West Virginia, and then they they've just kind of gone the other way. They've gone south, and um, you know they have one portal guy in battle, but you know I'm not sure he's he's enough to kind of get them over the hump. So. Uh, it it was a. I thought Illinois would have you know kind of. I thought they'd handle Indiana, and I thought they'd have a tougher game against Ohio State. So both of them kind of surprised me. And I think one of the differences from this year's Illini's team compared to last year, and coach, you just mentioned it, is that they can win in multiple different ways, right? I mean, uh, the Michigan State game at home, for example, the Indiana game you guys just talked about. Things might not be going well, but because of their maturity, their experience. They find ways to pull out those games. Yeah, and- there's no doubt. And that, and I think that's kind of developed as a season. You develop, uh, we've talked about a lot on the, on the Big Ten Network, developing an identity as a team. And how long does that take you to develop that identity? And, you know, they, they have clicked. I think that one week where they went, you know, to play uh, – Rutgers, Fort Atlantic, and then the Tennessee game, that one-week road trip, uh, they kind of came together as a team and figured some things out, figured some roles out, figured out an identity, and and since then, they, they've been clicking. How about looking forward, Big Ten in general, do you think, I mean, it's pretty bunched up at the top, Do you? and I'm eyeballing that Illinois-Purdue game um, in Champaign, the second-to-last game there. Do you think the Illini have a legitimate shot at winning the Big Ten tournament? I mean, I'm sorry, Big Ten uh, regular season? I, I could see them winning the Big Ten tournament. That I really see that. You know, they they get hot and they, you know, the way they play, it's tough to adjust and prep, prepare for them. Their style of play is so different. You know, just just looking at the schedule, they, they do have a bunch of road games. They're still, you know, at Michigan State. They're still at Maryland, who they already lost to. At Penn State is not going to be easy. We've seen that with Wisconsin, at Wisconsin, then you got Purdue, and then even at Iowa, they can score the basketball. So, you know, I, I, it, it, they're right there. Uh, they're going to have to beat. They're going to have to, you know, find a way to win a game. Maybe you wouldn't think they'd win at Wisconsin or something to maybe give them a chance to, to win the title. Is Wisconsin that good? I haven't seen much of them this year, and I know they just lost. Give me your your four one one on Wisconsin. They are. I had them the, the, their first Nebraska game, and they just controlled the game. And just like last night, up until the, they had nineteen point lead in, at Nebraska, and it's it, you know Nebraska's beaten Michigan State there, they've beaten Purdue there, and Northwestern there, and now Wisconsin. So Nebraska is pretty good. Now on the on the road, I'm not sure about Nebraska. You know, it's just a total total different team. It's 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 kind of it's baffling to be honest, um, but. They just shoot it so well there. I I think Wisconsin is it, they're real. I did not like them last year. I didn't like how they played. They were choppy. They just you talk about role de- definition. I don't know. They didn't have an identity. Um, you know, and and uh, again they got in the NIT. Uh, you know, they didn't get uh, what semifinals, final four, whatever. And, you know, and Greg Gard talks about it. They came back from that. They guys got a little extra, extra experience, extra games, got a little confidence. They came back. They made a commitment as a group. We are staying together. 
you know, and we're going to, you know, we're going to put time in. Their bodies are much different. They're all, you know, the the big guys are stronger and bigger. Uh, I think they all are. And then obviously they, their addition of a uh, store to the, you know, to the, you know, from the portal was, has been huge because they, their last year, every game, they played 22 close games last year. And they were, I think it was 13 and eight or something like that. Maybe 21 close games, whatever, something like that. And, and it all, they all came down to the end and they didn't really, they didn't make the plays. Now they don't even have many close games, but because, you know, they got a guy that can go make a play and Blackwell uh, has been a, Really nice surprise and addition for them, and then the development of of Klesman as a scorer. He's a he's always been a defensive stopper, but man, he's he's this last stretch here. He's he's been crazy how well he's played. So uh, they're they're legit, and and we'll see. It'll be interesting Sunday with the Purdue game and them coming off the loss. How about big picture for the Illini? I don't want to look too far ahead, but as far as calling this, I mean, without the coach speak and how we all talk about, you know, a success versus non-success of a season, um, you know, because in Illini land, there's a lot of talk about, you know, Brad Underwood in, in the NCAA tournament, right? Um, what what do you see this team's potential being as far as a NCAA tournament run? I, I really think, like I mentioned before, because of their style, their age, their maturity. Um, I think they can make a run. I, I really do. They, you know, it's just, and, and you know, it's, it, you got to, you know, match up, match to get up in the tournament, yeah. the right matchups are so important. Um, you know, to, I think one downfall they do have is, you know, when, you know, and this happened against Maryland, when you got a big guy that can score inside. Now Hawkins is a really good defender, but he doesn't, He's like Billy, you know. I, <laughs> Billy didn't want me to hit him with the pad because he was he was going to go flying. So, um, you know, so if you got a big guy that you can get get the ball to, uh, you know, it, it'll be interesting in the second Purdue game too how they deal with with Zach Eady. You know, he he didn't play much with that first one a lot when they had the big lead, and then he gets some foul trouble, and that got them back in the game. So the matchups in the tournament are really important. Obviously, the bounce of the ball, it's just. You just never know. But I really think, you know, their style is different. And um, with their age and the way they seem to be kind of enjoying each other, playing together in, in, a, in a positive way, I think they can make a nice run. Now, you get to the Sweet 16, that's one thing. Getting to that Final Four is a whole nother thing. you got to – I mean, we had the best team in the country and, you know – we almost didn't get to the final four. So it's just, it's, it's a, it's a really tough thing. Yeah. I want to, I want to switch gears and ask about a, a, a famous clip that's floating around Twitter now. And it's the, it's like the, however many passes, it was like 20 plus passes in the D and Darren era against Northwestern where the ball didn't hit the ground. And I saw today, someone tagged me and it. it's going, it's going viral again. And uh, I remember you telling us when I played there, like Carmody saying something about, can you just describe that one possession? Just because I, I still watch it today. I think it's unbelievable. It's just, a, uh, it's like, it should be in the encyclopedia next to, next to basketball. Uh, <laughs> give, give me, give me your thoughts on that clip. Well, it's, it, it's crazy. It's probably the only time in history that a, a play led off sports center that had to deal with passing the basketball because it's, <laughs> it's, it's usually, you know, it's dunks and game winners and half quarters or whatever. And, and they did a thing where they put all the passes up and then they had Bill Carmody on this. You know how coaches, I was probably the worst, you know, you're pointing and, you know, go, and Bill Carmody was like, boom, boom, boom. And I think, it, Bill, I think it was 16 passes and I could, but you think about with the shot clock, 16 passes, Getting the ball up, and at the end, you know, we score the basket, and Bill Carvey just sits down and goes, oh, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's just hilarious because, you know, he, he, he probably exhausted more energy, you know, pointing. And, but that's, that's why, how good we were. And, you know, I, and again, I'm not, it's just, we shared the basketball. We moved the basketball. That was right, that era, they had never really talked about, 
you know, oh, we got 32 field goals and 24 assists. You know, and it was the first time they started talking about that ratio because, like, people, like, started looking. God, they, they had 27 baskets and 22 of them were on assists. You know, and that that's what made our team so special. But uh, there was one, if you can find it, uh, Popovich had one with the, the Spurs playing the, the Heat in the – in the in the NBA playoffs, and it was the uh, I, I think they only had like twelve passes, but you think about twenty four second shot clock with twelve passes or whatever it was. I mean, that's another one that's a classic that I always showed to our teams. You know, they just kept moving the ball, and then you just see LeBron. It was it was kind of the backbreaker where you know it was two to two in the series or something, and then they that that possession they won the game, and then it went the other way, and, and the Spurs ended up winning that series. So. Um, you know, those that, you know, it, it, again, I, I'm a little bit old school and biased, but when teams play together and move the basketball, it's to me, that's, that's special and fun to watch. But before we wrap it up, coach, I just got, uh, two questions for you. The first, um, I play a lot of golf with Billy. Um, and <laughs> I can't help but mention that like sometimes after, you know, he hits a really good shot and he, twirls his club and says, gosh, if only, if only coach Weber would have let me shoot more, I'd be in the league. So my first question <laughs> is, why didn't you let Billy shoot more? Second question is through all your coaching over the years. And, and now you're broadcasting, obviously you've, you've seen a lot of college basketball and a lot of college basketball teams. Um, do you see any team that I don't want to say as good, but maybe resembles your national championship run team. And you have to you answer know, both. I, I, I loved how UConn played. Uh, last year, they were so good about moving the basketball, cutting, passing. They had an inside threat, um, and they're kind of doing it this year. I've only seen them a little bit, you know, just you channel surfing and you watch parts of games and stuff like that. Um, he he he's done a good job. I got to give him credit, and I like how they play, and that's you know that's how they won it. I I thought Arizona has played the game. You know, he's done a lot of handoffs which is really hard to defend now. You get big guys out on the court. And instead of ball screens, you can always heads or ice or trap or something like that. I, I like how Arizona plays at, at times, but they've had their struggles too. And I thought maybe they were better last year than they were maybe this year. So, And then for Billy, I Billy was self-checked. He just – it was him. I never told him not to shoot the damn back. No, well, it's he, actually – it's actually the opposite. I remember uh, I actually like Dimitri and coach would be like, shoot the fucking ball if you're open. And then one game in like the Big Ten tournament, our junior year, I think I, you know, everyone was telling me that because I, you know, I, I was coming off an era where you, you took one that was a little bit over the line. You heard that buzzer. So I was trying to stay on the floor and people were yelling at me. They said, shoot the ball, shoot the ball. And then I think one, I hit like an O for three streak in a big game against Michigan in the big 10 tournament. And Wayne McClain said, tell him to shoot the damn ball. He's not, he's not making it. Ill. He goes, Billy, listen to me. Don't shoot the ball. He's like, he's like pass the ball this game. And he was really the only one that ever told me to stop shooting, but uh, <laughs> So that that wasn't a fair question. I'll save you one from that. <laughs> I had to although that over, over overseas, I was like Dirk Nowitzki. Though it was unbelievable. I got the first. <laughs> I got the first talk. My first practice from the coach. He said, "Look, I don't. I don't think you understand. You're you're here. You're here to shoot. Basically, every time you touch the ball." And I was like, "Oh, okay. This is this you're is going to be guy. Fun. You're the guy. Yeah, yeah he had a neat and green you light. Don't, you don't score. You're going uh, home." We'll link. We'll link the uh, highlight tape if you guys want to see it here. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. All right, we're gonna wrap it, Coach. Um, first off, it's it's awesome seeing you and chatting with you. Um, so we really appreciate um, you getting on and, and catching up and, and all your time. And so happy you're enjoying your your broadcasting and your Chicago slash Florida life um, <laughs> and the grandkids and everything. Hopefully, you know we can catch you in a few weeks. Um, and kind of rehash and, and see where the line I are at. I, I love this, the journey with this team. I, I think it's they're in a great spot here in, in you know early February, um, and it's going to be interesting um, to watch them grow and, and what they can potentially become. Um, you know their, their capabilities throughout the end of the year. So, coach, it's great having you, man. It's great seeing yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for being on. Good to see you guys. And I agree. I love the word you said, journey, because the season you guys know the season is a journey. 
And a lot of times fans think, you know, either you're good or not. No, you can develop as a team. You can evolve as a team. And and I can see them continuing evolving and, and things going their way and the way they play. I, I, I think we should be talking in a few weeks about if they're competing for that Big Ten title. You know, you got Purdue and, and Wisconsin that, that last couple of weeks. So, uh, you know, if they're, if they're up there, then they, it's going to be in their hands to kind of find a way to win it. So it'll be fun. But. Great catching up. All the best to you, Sammy, on your new little one. And and Bill, I'm just happy your kids do not look like you. They look like your father. Oh, yeah. That's all I know. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, just to echo what Sam said, thank you so much for coming on. I think we always have a blast talking hoops with you. Um, and it's good just to get to catch up every once in a while. So thank you. And also – uh, your transition to TV has been amazing, by the yeah. way. Uh, I, I hear from Illinois fans, non-Illinois fans. They all think you do a great job on the Big Ten. So keep that fun up. It's awesome work. Appreciate it. I just try to have fun. I, you know, yeah. it's just, it, it, and I went through even with the coaches. You know, it's so stressful. Um, you know, hey, it, you know, I encourage. I, I text a lot of the guys and encourage them and try to, you know, be positive with them because it, it's a hard job because. Especially now with social media, <laughs> yeah. everybody's a coach, but they don't know anything about basketball. That's the problem. So, but good catching up, Billy. If you come down to Naples, the beer's on me. Awesome, thanks, I love coach. It. All, all the best. All, right. to, all the best care. to the family. We'll talk soon. All right, thanks, Bye. coach.